Hi, hi! Welcome back to the Kellogg Garden YouTube channel. I'm Holly Capelli, a gardener in Zone 8B. And the last time we were together, we had just harvested a beautiful backyard harvest of edible flowers and herbs. And today I wanted to take you inside and show you how I preserve my harvest. But before we do, if you haven't already, be sure to hit that subscribe button and notification bell so that you don't miss any cool upcoming Kellogg Garden videos. Come on, let's go inside. Okay, we've got our herbs all rinsed and I've got them laying out to air dry. You can air dry them on paper towels or use a towel like this if you want um, more of a zero waste method. Um, but I just let them air dry for a short time, long enough for them to not be, you know, wet. And then um, I will bundle them up and hang dry the longer ones. Chive blossoms, I'm gonna put in vinegar the chives I'll dry, I'll chop them and then dry. The thyme I will leave just as is and dry on screens. And then the other stuff over there I will hang. So, got my work cut out for me. I've rinsed and air dried my herbs and now I've got them hanging on this old crib rack. Can use whatever you have as long as it has good airflow. You never want your herbs to be up against a wall. This I can lay at a slant so it gives me proper airflow. Um, I know it's very pretty to also see herbs hanging in a window but you never want them drying in direct sunlight. That's how you get brown herbs. So you want them to just slow and steady dry in a dark, cool place. I keep them in my dining room. There's no windows in there. And I just um, lean it up against the wall like this um, at an angle. And it will take about uh, two weeks maybe to for all of these to dry. And then I'll jar them up. So this is another way that we dry our herbs. We have uh, these two drying lines in our dining room, again, just attached with eye hooks and wires. And then um, I just bundle my rinsed and air dried herbs in bundles of three. And I bind them with twine. You wanna make sure to remove your leaves where you're going to um, tie it up so that you don't get any mold. And I like to do no more than three stems, again, so that we don't get too much and have the risk of mold. So a nice bundle of three tied up and then with a clothespin is how I attach them onto the wire. They take about a week to two weeks to dry depending on temperature outside and inside. This is oregano that we just hung to dry. And over here is lemon balm that is dried and ready to go. For my chives, I went ahead and chopped them um, into kind of big pieces, but they'll shrink up a bit as they dry. And I'm just spreading them out here on this plate that I am keeping, um, again, away from direct sunlight and in a well-ventilated area. Shouldn't take long for them to dry. I wanted to show you what we did with those chive blossoms that we harvested. This is my infused vinegar cupboard. Oh! <laughs> it's full of goodies. And here are the chive blossoms that we harvested. I just mixed them with some white vinegar. They've just been steeping in here a short time. And as you can see already, they're a gorgeous pink color. We also have um, wild violet infusion going. It's another beautiful pink color. I've got a deep purple viola and thyme mix that's just 
stunning, really. I cannot wait to taste this one. Uh, I also have a calendula and sage blend, which is a beautiful light orange color. And then I have this very cool Spanish lavender steeping that is the deepest purple I've seen yet. Um, I've also got citrus and purple basil vinegar. There's all kinds. The uses for these are numerous. Uh, in cooking, you can use it in any recipe that calls for vinegar. They're great for homemade uh, vinaigrettes or marinades. In cocktails, you can use them as shrubs. And if you want to use them in beauty products, then um, you'll need to use apple cider vinegar when you infuse, but you can create all kinds of cool face toners and things like that. So it's definitely a fun way to preserve your garden harvest. And if you're interested in making your own infused vinegars, you can find a how-to video on my YouTube channel, Big Family Living. We'll put a link in the description below for you. Here in the corner of my dining room is where I dry all of my flowers. I use just a metal storage rack and I use window screens for the actual drying. This allows complete airflow, uh, which is key when drying your flowers and herbs. I also make sure that the shelf is pulled away from the wall. You don't want anything leaning up against. Um, that can just cause mold, especially in my area. When I dry the calendula, I like to, or any flower really, I turn it upside down and I make sure it's open. That just helps to keep its shape. Um, and with calendula, a lot of the benefits are in the middle of this flower. So I like to dry them whole. Some flowers, like roses, I just dry the petals. Um, it takes anywhere from, you know, a few days to, you know, two weeks for them to dry. It really just depends, again, like with the herbs, on temperature indoors and out. Um, here they are fresh. And then here is what they look like dry. And they're just beautiful little things. And you can use them, of course, in your culinary uh, dishes or to make uh, lots of beauty products, which is why I like to have a big collection of them. I also have down here on this rack some of the violas that we harvested. And these just take but a few days because they're so tiny. And I go ahead and just dry them whole. The really perfect, beautiful ones I press uh, or we eat. And then uh, the rest or the smaller ones, I just go ahead and let dry. We use these in our teas and baked goods. You can chop them up as a colorful garnish. Um, you can infuse oils with them and make beauty products with them. So again, a really handy, versatile little flower. So that is my little flower drying section. So fun. Another option if you don't have a window screen for drying is just to use your dehydrator racks. Um, I've got roses uh, or rose petals on here right now and it works great. I don't actually use the dehydrator to dehydrate the flowers. Um, I feel like that just zaps the color and the scent and the flavor and everything from them uh, when you speed dry. So I'm just simply using the racks. The last thing that we have to process out of our harvest is the violas. Some we've already eaten and a few I've stuck into ice trays to make ice cubes with. Um, we also have some that are on the drying racks that I showed you, but most of them we are pressing to use later. I just take a piece of wax paper, parchment paper, and I date it. Um, you can even write what flower it is if you are drying a variety of flowers. Um, you might also note on it whether they're edible or not if you're going to do a large variety. When I place my violas on the wax paper, I place them upside down and I try to spread them out all the way. Hopefully you're harvesting when they're open anyway, um, but you want to try to open them up and then lay them flat. 
cover them with the wax paper and then stick them in a book. Then those books get either bricks put on top of them or pieces of wood or other bricks just to apply um, some weight to it. These are done. And as you can see, delicate, paper thin, absolutely beautiful. You can use these in crafts. Um, you can decorate cakes with them and bake goods with them. They're just beautiful. I will store them in this wax paper still. I'll just leave them the way they are like this. And I will put them all into a sealed plastic bag. So that's it. All of those beautiful things we harvested have been processed. Way to go, us. <laughs> so maybe you're asking yourself, well, why does she do all of that work? All the growing and harvesting and cleaning and rinsing and drying and preserving. Well, this is why. This is my favorite garden collection by far. It's actually one of the reasons why I continue to garden every single year. Filling these jars up is everything. Almost everything that you see here, we grew ourselves with the exception of a few jars here or there. We of course did not grow my dehydrated citrus peels, um, but the edible flowers and the herbs all from our yard. Um, down here on this lower shelf, I have a ton of um, infused garden salts. I have a green oregano salt, a purple rose salt, and a blue viola and rosemary salt um, all infused. So there's just so many fun things you can do with an herb garden, edible flowers, vegetables. We have dried peppers up here. We did ourselves as well. Um, this is my pride and joy. This is my baby. And this is how I use the garden every day in my everyday cooking. Um, it's how I incorporate what we grow in every dish that I cook. And it's really worth all the work. Once we've gotten our herbs and edible flowers uh, dried, it's time to store them. I prefer to store mine in glass jars with tight fitting lids so that I can see them. Um, it's important to note that when you store your herbs whole, they will last longer. Um, I make it a whole year with my herbs when I leave them whole. Uh, so I have a, a back up here that I keep that way. But I also use my herbs all the time. So here again, I have more oregano, but it's ground up and ready to go. That's going to have a shelf life closer to three to six months. And you can tell when your herbs are starting to um, not be good anymore. They'll start to fade. They'll turn brown. Or they just won't smell like anything anymore. Uh, but for the most part, if you keep them in uh, jars and really out of direct sunlight, I do have a window in my kitchen, but the herbs aren't directly in the sunlight and it's not been an issue. Um, but some people prefer that they're stored in a dark cabinet. Uh, that will just certainly extend the shelf life for you even longer. When you first jar them up, it's important that you open the jars up and let them breathe. Um, every day is ideal. Every other day might be a little bit more realistic. And you do it for, you know, five, ten minutes. You want to shake them up every once in a while and then open the jars and just let them breathe. Once you've done that for the first week or two, um, they should be acclimated to their new home and it shouldn't be an issue anymore. You don't have to continue to do it. So there you go. And here is a peek also at all of those beautiful uh, herb and flower infused salts. So many things you can do. Thanks so much for joining me. I hope you were able to find some tips and ideas on how you can preserve your harvest. And if you have any tips or ideas you can share with us, please be sure to just drop them in the comments below. We would love to hear from you.
We'll see you next time when I do another tour of our backyard garden. And this time we have all kinds of exciting vegetables growing and popping up. I cannot wait to show you. Until then, you can find me over at Instagram at Big Family Living. We'll see you soon. Happy gardening.